the second of my Art Time watercolours. It's the Art History set and ooh, I can't wait to show them to you. So first of all, with this little tiny palette, very, very light, you can remove and move around any of the little pans. So you can swap them with my other sets. I also have empty palettes as well. You have some fun building your own dream watercolour set. The Art History set has different colours to my petite watercolours and my other Art Time watercolours. I like to have as much variety for you as possible. So I'm building on my neutral colours in this particular palette. And we start off with Prehistory, uh, Ancient and Medieval. These are three really beautiful, rich, fairly transparent neutral colors which means they blend very beautifully and I'm actually painting on the swatch card that comes with the set so you've got the color names some of my illustrations on the front and then you can paint in your swatches for your reference on the back renaissance is a really deep highly pigmented uh, rich oh, almost a burgundy but she's she's still a cool burgundy a beautiful color for creating really rich skin tones and also going into faces diluted for a lovely cheek color as well after the renaissance <laughs> we have mannerism this is or can be used as a light skin tone or the base of a light skin tone or for highlights on a darker skin tone has a little bit of opacity to it it's a naples yellow which is just a very handy color. The next movement we have is Baroque. This is a red that has a little bit of guts to it. And our next color is Rococo, which is a cool red, but more transparent. The next color is this gorgeous fuchsia called Romanticism. It's an opera rose really lovely and sheer beautiful to mix with other colors like modernist very sheer purple beautiful for shadows and shading and a pretty neutral purple she's right in the middle <laughs> pop art is a nice sheer blue it's great for mixing natural greens and i and because this palette is so transportable and you can attach the little optional wristband to it as well i wanted the greens that you create to be like foliage and all beautiful green eyes so you can get a, a range of more natural greens if you add that with the other primary colors that are in here surrealist which is the yellow pop up that blue and you could decide between baroque or a cocoa there are two different reds one's warmer one's cooler so you're going to get a range of different purples a range of natural greens and to mix oranges I would mix the uh, surrealist and the romanticism that beautiful bright pink get a gorgeous orange but you can use of course the other reds as well so what I'm saying is there are many options in there for mixing colors as well as your neutrals which are going to be nice for drawing people and landscapes uh, or in a city uh, so drawing architecture uh, or if you're out in the country you've still got a nice range with the blues for a sky that um, blue is beautiful for skies anyway <laughs> so that was my thinking on putting this particular palette of colors together and now let me show them in action now I love to paint people if you know me at all then you you know that and I'm painting another girl with red hair I think it's because these colors are just so vivid and vibrant and before I started the camera rolling I had already put down a little bit of a flesh base using ancient and mannerism and I'd let that dry now I'm working and layering my colors uh, over that dry base uh, and I get a diff different effect when I do that uh, rather than layering my watercolor into a wet base which lets things spread out a lot more and blend whereas I wanted to build up more distinct areas of color other than where I'm working wet in wet these are just watercolor terms and I'm 
generously laying down the color adding a little bit of that beautiful contemporary opaque white to sit there and let that softly blend in on those damp colors then I've walked away let everything dry completely and getting ready for another little painting session where I'm going to add a few more details I've got my little hello pop-up water cup <laughs> which is in my signature barley blue and of course, I've got the art time, art history set waiting for me. I'm going to create my details using one of my ink brushes. And I'm using the fine tip. This effectively lets me turn my watercolor paint into a set of markers because I can get quite fine results, especially with this little fine brush. And the reason I love water brushes so they've got the water in the handles they just stay soft juicy and the watercolor extends out further and I love these very very fine brush tips and I can concentrate on my details without going back and forth to my paint quite so much so I'm just loosely putting in the features I've got those dark areas that I created with modernist on the skin tone and you can see where the colors have I've let them bleed into each other so if I just left it like that it would look a little bit strange as the border for a face but you'll see in a second how I can just tidy that up if I wish to uh, and by using other colors sitting on the top so I've got a little bit of that contemporary white it's not going to stay completely opaque opaque watercolors because they are water soluble and they react with whatever is underneath them so it's going to soften off a little and one if I have got a layer cake white which is far more opaque but a soft white is a very very handy thing and you can always do a couple of layers if you wanted to build up the opacity with that but I can put that white down especially around the uh, eyes on the height of the cheekbones where I want to create a bit of a cheek highlight and that will just soften off and pick up the colors underneath and create a more natural highlight and you can see where I'm just adding a little more structure just over the top of those um, surfaces or those areas that are just let to blend so you've got that interesting tone underneath and then you can add a little bit of definition with either a highlight or you could use even a pen I like to start with that highlight and then if I want to add more strength into that line I can keeping in mind that our body doesn't have outlines on it uh, we are outline free <laughs> So if you want to add outlines, it's up to you. If you don't want to, you can just hint at edges and you can hint at an edge with light or with shadow. Both options are available to you. In fact, both options exist in this palette because you can mix up dark. So at the beginning of this um, details section, I mixed my own dark using medieval and a little bit of prehistoric and mixing in a bit of modernist could even have put a bit of pop art in there to mix a not a black but just a nice dark neutral that's going to be actually fairly natural and uh, let me have lots of fun with that I'm adding some little detailed lines some little more structural lines for the hair so that's not just a red blob <laughs> <laughs> it's actually got a little bit of body and movement to it and a little bit of a story is starting to happen now just as with my first art time set the Jainism set these are fantastic for travel you can attach the optional wrist strap it just pops on and off very easily you can just have one strap and use it between all of your different art time palettes just very very easy to click in it's just a, a friction fit it's just got that little metal uh, ba a little metal bar that just snaps into place and then pop it around your wrist it literally fits any size because of the way that it's designed 
very, very easy and comfortable too because it's got those gaps in it. It just stays nice and cool, very convenient, not just for travel, but just for creating wherever you want to. Inside the palette, it's got these little sponge areas where you can clean off your brush. And it's fabulous without the wrist strap, just sitting on your art space. So although they're small, they are mighty. Mm -hmm. 